Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about secure network communications. Uh, it's based on some former work we did and then some work we're trying to enlist and some work we did with, in combination with the U.S. and Canada. Canada was part of this operation, even the local university at Carleton. Uh, um, so as I was mentioning, the, uh, the OMG is trying to reconstitute a group that was based on, at the time, software-based communications or software-defined radio. And the idea was to uh, bring, have commercial tools support some of the notions that were already working for the military, bring them out of the military, take the, the giant spec that they used and, and streamline it such that lots of other people could use it. And I'll give you examples. Uh, Another reason uh, to uh, reinvigorate the group is because times have changed. Uh, at one point, uh, high performance embedded computing was a separate group, not in OMG, then it came into the OMG. Um, and you know we're clearly getting into uh, network communications uh, as evidenced by the previous discussion. Uh, and sensor communications based on some burgeoning uh, specifications. So it makes sense to generalize software-defined radio to uh, secure and networking. And the other thing that makes it possible, I'm not sure if anyone's really talked about this for those of you who haven't been in the, the bowels of the new uh, SysML details, but it's now possible to couple a lot of the, a lot of the things that we used to do that we do do in as systems engineers, uh, things that we would do in MATLAB or Simulink. So parametric modeling and, and SysML clearly lets us connect to external tools, um, built-in code generation capabilities with all the major tool vendors you probably saw at the demos. Um, and I'm not sure if many people talked about FMI, because FMI is not a OMG standard, but it allows for co-simulation. What I mean by that is, say with either either Rhapsody or with Magic Draw, you can do state-based simulation, uh, but you can't do the same kind of simulation that you would do in, say, Simulink. So FMI is the functional mock-up interface that companies, that all the major signal processing systems engineering modeling tools conform to and you can import and export to and from SysML. So this way you can have not only a state model, but signal processing models of everything. And from those tools, you can get all the way down to FPGAs. Right? You, can, you can use tools like in Simulink to translate to anything. So I'm going to skip a lot of this animation because we only have a half an hour. Um, so our original mission was uh, to promote the goals of, um, of what the military had, which was they basically wanted to extend uh, waveform interoperability. So lots of waveforms could work with other waveforms. Waveforms in this context means an entire application. So it's a fairly big thing in terms of radio. So an example would be uh, uh, VHF communication or UHF communication or wideband networking communication. Uh, and platform independence, that it should run on anything. Uh, we also were collaborating with other OMG groups, like the robotics group sprung out of our group. Our hardware abstraction layer got inherited by the robotics group. Uh, we want to broaden the previous charter we had with some related new technologies uh, so there's a digital IF standard as one example. Uh, to promote software radio specs within the radio community and to maintain a liaison with not only the OMG, but the, there were lots of people standardizing on different aspects of radio. So you know, we don't have a horse in that game. We're just trying to provide uh, the bits and pieces people could use. So an example would be um, one of the larger parts of the military spec and one part of most embedded systems is lightweight logging. Uh, 
Uh, so we created a lightweight logging spec. I'll get into some other examples later. Um, and by doing so, you could remove lightweight logging and refer to the OMG spec and all the people that used it. So I covered a lot of uh, these already. Let me see which ones I didn't talk about. Uh, the lion's share of, of software defined of the radio specs, because a lot of you might not be interested in radios, um, really has nothing to do with radios. It really has to do with embedded systems. And the lion's share of the military form of the spec was uh, the deployment and configuration of uh, components. I would say about half the spec. So here's the way I like to think about it. You know, if you think of uh, what the military was using as this gigantic spec that only they were using, then think of it like a big apple. And every time we took a computer science-y bite out of the apple, then what was left was more radio parts for them and other parts that people could commercialize for everybody else, like all the other tool vendors. Um, so that was basically our goal. And we, I'll show you how far we got to our goal. Because I'm going someplace with this story. You know, we got so far, then it was dormant for a while. So I'll get to the punchline and then fill in the differences. And now we're reviving our activities and you can participate. That's sort of where I'm going with everything. Um, so this was born out of what was the JTRS, the Joint Tactical Radio uh, Software Group. Um, Steve McLaird in the OMG was Colonel McLaird at the time, supporting this uh, billion dollar acquisition. You know, there was lots of radios. Um, so the, the waveform inventory, this is hyperlink. So when you get the presentation, you can find out which waveforms. Um, the GTRS is now the JNTC. Uh, and it actually does work on 750,000 radios today. So it's actually in use. Um, and the standardization body in the beginning was uh, the SDR forum or the SDRF. Right now they're called the Wireless Innovation Forum or WINF. So part of what we want to do is collaborate with them too because they haven't stood still. Uh, they used a lot of what the OMG did, then we went dormant, and they continued on with the spec. So basically what we want to do is serve a wider community, get more people interested, um, take advantage of the fact that HPEC is now in the OMG, and serve a wider community. So immediately the, the closest in community that really wants to use this and is using this is the space community. So the space community has something called STRS. Uh, we have a, an RFI that I'm going to get to in a page or two. Um, but the, one of the largest responders was NASA. And we're going to do the same sort of thing with this spec that we did with um, the existing OMG specifications. Uh, so I'll talk about those and also will continue with some of the overlapping groups such as robotics. So at the time we, can, we built the, these the, in blue are the existing specs, the deployment and configuration of components, lightweight logging service, and the UML profile for software radio. So we wanna update those. The rest of them are uh, specifications that we had affected as a group. And on the left you have uh, the SCA, it's an architectural portrayal of the thing that we were updating. On the right is the STRS. So it's, it, there's a lot of similarities. They want a waveform interoperability as well. They want platform independence as well. Uh, they want the same kind of system management and communication services such as application factories and resource factories. And, and then there's some differences, uh, frequencies and data rates change. And as you can imagine, um, the whole deployment and configuration of components is a lot different when you're communicating with satellites than when you're communicating with radios. Yet, you know, to us, it's just a, a platform uh, difference, a reconfiguration difference. So 
uh, in the presentation, I pointed to a paper that if you're interested, you can read about the overlap between uh, NASA's STRS and what they borrowed from the OMG work and the SCA work that we did at the time. Uh, the estimate is somewhere between 90 and 95% of the STRS is based on the work that we did. So um, as one of the things I did prior to coming on to Sierra Nevada is um, I was actually in Mercury when we were doing all this work, uh, but I had started up a company that was going to commercialize a military-based mobile ad hoc network. And I got to ask myself, what would I do if I didn't have all the requirements that the military imposed on me, like CORBA and so on? But I still wanted all the pros that you got from something like the software communication architecture. So we built our own model-based, anywhere, depending on how close you got to the hardware between 30 and 100% of the code was model generated, and 100% of the documentation was model generated. Uh, so this strange diagram that I have on my left is um, hard to decipher, but it's uh, per layer. What I'm trying to connote is um, per networking layer, the SCA and the OMG spec is broken into uh, framework control, framework interfaces, base device interfaces, and application services. So we actually got to build one of those, and the structure is reusable. I guess that's the point. So it's truly platform independent. And if you're building systems like this, it's a specification worth looking at. And here's my appeal for audience participation. So now we're trying to revive the group that existed. Uh, so we have uh, a request for information that's out there. So there's a hyperlink there. Um, I pulled, you can't actually see it because some of it's running off the screen, but uh, the response date is revised to November 12th of this year. So there's time for you to participate. Um, and we're interested in where you'd like to see the specification go. You know, and what your interest is and if you'd like to participate. So, but the RFI that I was referring to, it basically is going to ask you these questions. So it's gonna identify, ask you to identify your interest. Hopefully you'll be participating with a spec in greater or lesser ways. Uh, your level of interest, are you gonna be a user? Are you an editor? Are you a... Uh, uh, related tool vendor, like say DDS might be in this example. Um, which parts you might be interested in writing and what sort of projects do you have? Um, so to respond to an RFI, uh, an OMG response uh, to a formal document may sound like a heavy lift, but it's not really. You know, it's basically, if you were to, if we were to stand in the hallway and you were to answer these questions only to put it on a piece of paper and send it to us, that's all we're looking for. And uh, Stephen McLaird from OMG can take credit for all of this, or most of this anyways, but he's out talking to a lot of different groups. So the, uh, the Air Force Space and Missile Center, first responders, uh, the cybersecurity community, heavily with NASA. So. Let me tell you what uh, bore you with one OMGism. You know, one way of developing a specification is to go from the ground up with lots of participants over several years, fold in everybody's ideas, and eventually it's a spec. UML was like that, Corbin was like that. In other areas where a spec is pretty much in wide use and readily accepted by the community, another way of starting is what they call an RFC. Uh, so you send something out as a request for comment and you look for deviations from the existing spec and what the user community wants. Uh, so we're gonna attempt to go down the RFC route because we have these specs out there. Uh, the response, responses we get, we're getting are pretty close. And 
they're published on the OMG website. So if you look at SNC and RFI and you respond, you can see what other people responded with. And that's a place to put your responses as well. So the vision, the SCA is, uh, is a UML construct uh, where you could, um, where people that were generating SC, SCA is, I should have probably said it in the beginning, the military framework version of this is the SCA, Software Communication Architecture. So people that were compliant with the SCA, you've had a couple of local ones here in Canada. Uh, so for instance, Francis Bordelow, who participated in this from Carleton, started a company called Zelixoft, which was an SCA tool. Some of you may have heard of that. And uh, the Communications Research Center uh, in Canada, uh, Steve Bernier in particular, uh, had their own SCA tool called SCARY. SCA was the scare part of that. Um, and with a lot of these SCA tools, you could actually generate some embedded code some of the embedded code intersected or not with some of the tools we use uh, to develop signal processing software, like say MATLAB. And some of it didn't, you know, so there was no, no real intersection. Um, and MathWorks have their own set of communication toolboxes and at the time SDR toolboxes, and some of those were being used, some of those weren't. Um, and the UML modeling part was not firmly connected to the SCA framework. So rather than start with something like uh, rational rows and then evolve this through the network, uh, tools like Zelixoft had their own UML environment that duplicated a lot of what rows did. So the vision is now that we have uh, all, um, that we, now that we have SysML and all the formal specs that come with that, the precise semantics of time, precise semantics of state machines and so on, um, we can create parametric models that can operate in the MathWorks like world, you know, not necessarily in MathWorks. Um, MathWorks toolboxes overlap with um, high performance embedded computing uh, toolboxes and libraries such as GraphBlast, for instance, for parallel computing. Um, and you can generate code from MathWorks or directly from the SysML route or from any number of routes. So, you know, the vision is to auto-generate a lot of the code and to maintain the model. Uh, in terms of whether this SNC group will have a a life beyond 2018, sort of a function of who responds to the RFI. If, um, if right now we have some responders, so I think we're going to, uh, we're going to submit the RFC either way, um, but now's a good time to participate and we'll gauge interest in this group by who responds to the RFI, basically, and to the RFC when we submit it. Uh, we'll continue to liaison with uh, the WNF groups and the space groups, and uh, we're trying to catalyze commercial interest again by getting them to operate with our group. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you.